beautiful souls, people who have done wonderful things to humanity, to the planet, die, gone at an early age. Criminals who are hurting civilization, humanity, the planet, are alive till 1980. So there is no logic, there is no reason in this journey called life and death. This is, this is a, a true life story that I felt important to share with you. In life, we use this term, matter of life and death, very often and very sort of casually and lightly. But for me, it has a very deep meaning. Because at a, at a very early age of 18, when I just got my motorcycle riding license, I got my first second-hand motorcycle. I remember the number plate MMI 7666, Yes, the, and I was so excited. And uh, also my life had found a meaning at that time because I had decided that I wanted to be a cricketer. So I, I had put in all I had into that sport. My father was, uh, uh, you know, a professional. He was, a, he, was a, he was an employee in the sugar industry. So we were a middle-class family and extremely cautious of what career path you take because dad did not have all the resources to ensure that I could do what I wanted in life. And, but I still made that decision against the will of the family because I felt a certain calling to be a cricketer. I found a great coach at that time in Mr. Ashok Mankari's No More and his uh, cricket camp clinic uh, called AMCC, which is Ashok Mankar Cricket Clinic. And that used to happen in Navy Nagar in South Mumbai. And I used to ride my motorcycles, motorcycle and, and, and go there every morning. I used to leave home at 6. I used to be, get there at 6.30. That was a sort of a routine. I used to live in a building which was 20 floors tall. And my house was on the 20th floor, and the third floor, a very dear friend of mine, who was a state table tennis player, uh, used to live on the third floor. Uh, he was 18, I was 18. He, he had a career in table tennis. I was into cricket, but actually, whenever he got a moment out of, out of his studies in table tennis, he came and joined me to play cricket in the building. And then that particular week, he said, hey, listen, I want to join you at, at the camp, at your cricket camp. And I said, bro, focus on your studies and table tennis. He said, I have time, I want to come. So that particular morning, he was all ready to come. And I said, I give him the address that you reached there. But he insisted that he wanted to ride with me on my motorcycle. And I, I reluctantly said yes, because, you know, I want to be responsible for my own life when I'm driving or riding. I don't want to be responsible for other person's life. And I was just 18. So I was taught <laughs> to say no uh, at least to take, to take someone as a pillion on my motorcycle because my parents were also very, very worried about me having a motorcycle at such an early age. But he insisted. And I remember that moment because his parents were on the balcony at, at 6 o'clock in the morning and they waved to both of us goodbye and we were happy because both of us had our kids on the motorcycle and we left. We drove... We drove to Marine Drive and then we reached this place called Nariman Point. And at Nariman Point, you know, you, you have a traffic light and you take a left. And just about 100 meters, there was a small gap in the road and a water tanker. Because generally early in the morning in Mumbai, a lot of water tankers go to deliver water around the city. It was called Good Luck Water Services. I still remember the name. He came from the other direction and just swung right with no indicator, nothing. And boom. My motorcycle, which was, I was riding at, I think, 30 kilometers an hour because I had just turned, I, I hadn't even got the momentum. But he slammed, in, my bike slammed the front of the tire of the truck. I flew 20 feet away. And my friend fell on, I fell on this side. 
boom, he fell on this side. And the truck ran over him. I, I was 18, I didn't know what was going on. I picked him up, I held him in my lap, I screamed for help. It was early morning, lots of joggers, but I guess nobody wanted to take the risk because I later realized what an accident case means in, in India or in Mumbai. Nobody came to my rescue until my friend, one of my friend, I remember his name, I think it's Uday, who had just parked his car to go to Marine Drive for a run and he saw me and he says, what's going on, Shalindra? And I said, help me, help me. It was, it was like a straight out of the movie scene. And he helped me pick my friend up, put in the back seat of the car, and we drove instantly to the closest hospital called the Bombay Hospital. Surprisingly, in those days, the OPD, the outpatient department in Mumbai, Bombay Hospital at that time was at the back of the hospital. So to carry my friend to the back of the hospital and then be told that private hospitals don't take accident cases because unless there is a police constable with a desk in a hospital, they don't take accident cases because before actually Looking at the patient, they had to register the accident with the constable. I had to re-pick him up, put him in the car, and then it was just two kilometers away that there was a government hospital. When the car was turning into the gate of the government hospital, he was in my lap, I was in the back seat, and I know he had left us. And at that time, at 18, I had not had such a big life experience. In a flash of a moment, I don't know how much time had passed, but a few of my family members, but all of his family members, he was a Maharashtrian boy, a lovely guy, all of them reached there. I, shockingly, flying 20 feet, everything was torn, everything was gone, but I wasn't bleeding. A single bone in my body wasn't broken. Nothing had happened to me, and he was no more. So such an early stage of my life, I understood what death meant. Because I, I felt death, I lived death, and then I realized that I had to live death for the rest of my entire life. I was scarred for life. I had lost a friend. And then I realized the meaning of life and death. Till that time, you don't know at that age. You're full of life. All you can see is positivity, happiness, celebration, joy, hope. That's all you know. When you see and feel death, you realize that there is an end. And it can come. It can come at any point in time. And it can come to anybody. Beautiful souls People who have done wonderful things to humanity, to the planet, die, gone at an early age. Criminals who are hurting civilization, humanity, the planet, are alive till 1980. So there is no logic, there is no reason in this journey called life and death. If you're alive, you have life. The day you don't have life, it's called death. And the interesting part about this is that when someone dies, that person just dies, right? That person just leaves. But that person leaves behind a million emotions, thousands of relationships, thousands of memories. And those people, those friends, relatives, subordinates have to live for the rest of their lives with all those emotions and memories that that person who is now gone, who is now dead. It's difficult. The reason I do this is because that happened to me at 18 and something similar happened to me now, a month ago. And I'm unable to understand the meaning of this word, life, 
and death. So my only submission is that I'm really glad that I'm still breathing and I'm alive. And, and I hope my life is meaningful in a manner beyond happiness to myself. And I do live and pray for all the souls who are dead and gone, but their memories are alive forever and ever. And I must say that what I experienced at 18, and then of course I experienced the death of my father and many more <laughs> very beautiful people in, in reaching up to 50. But what I experienced a month ago, I think sometimes life can be death, even when you're alive. <laughs> Thank you.